Season 2 might be the most important Simpsons season, but that shouldn't stop us from putting on our critical hat and ranking them. This is the internet, of course we have to rank things. I took all 22 episodes, cut the list down to 14 prime candidates, and then cut that list down even further. This was really painful to do. It turns out season 2 is full of consistently fascinating episodes. So here are my top 10 Simpsons episodes from season 2. Dead Pudding Society is great in how much it juxtaposes the absolute hatefulness of Homer with an inherently silly premise. It makes hatefulness fun! This might have been the first episode that cranked up that side of Homer's personality, that small, insecure, and legitimately mean side of him. The whole thing doesn't feel that oppressive or anything, though, because we're just talking about miniature golf and a goofy bet about dressing and drag. That helps smooth things over. I really enjoy this dogged and conflicted version of Flanders, how he so desperately wants to avoid this confrontation, but stands up for himself because of how blatant and aggressive it is. We get those early churchy tendencies too, the beginning of poor Reverend Lovejoy. Bringing in Bart and Lisa was a really smart move, expanding the scope of the story and providing a new set of jokes. I think this would get tiresome if it was all Homer and Flanders, shifting some of the POV to Bart significantly improves it. Also the miniature golf stuff is totally epic feels ahead of its time with its life and death portrayal of such a mundane sport. Still, the story is self-aware enough to just have the characters say, screw it, and quit the match. Of course the whole thing is stupid and pointless. As long as Homer and or Flanders ends up mowing the lawn in a dress, I'm fine with however Bart and Todd wants to end it. Bart the Daredevil is the episode that features Homer falling down Springfield Gorge. It's obviously making this top 10 list. It's gotta be one of the top 5 or top 10 most famous Simpsons moments of all time. It is a bit of a one scene wonder for me, which is why it's at number 9 and not higher. It features a fun topical story about daredevils, monster trucks, how impressionable kids can be. The opening set piece with Truckosaurus is awesome. Kinda crazy how we got here, but still awesome. Love how they portray Lance Murdoch's enthusiasm for breaking bones, how they'll still go for that autograph. I always wonder, if this episode were made in season 6, whether that autograph would inexplicably come out correctly. Hmm. I'd say the Homer and Bart relationship stuff is a bit undercooked overall, the setup is like one scene total, but I gotta admit that ending is super heartwarming between these two. Homer and Bart go through a lot together throughout the series as a whole, and seeing these two try to protect each other is really nice. And of course, Homer falling down the gorge never ceases to be hilarious. The initial cartooniness, the shockingly gritty aftermath, the ambulance fakeout. Absolutely perfect. Bart vs. Thanksgiving is a little like the telltale head of season 1, in that it feels like the ultimate hangout episode. In this case, just hanging out at the Simpsons' house, experiencing what Thanksgiving would be like with them. Sitting around watching TV, doing prep work. Heck, simply just walking through rooms. I don't know why we need to see Marge walking through this scene, but it feels so immersive, so homey and familiar. I guess that's why they added it. Yeah, this is kind of a simple morality tale, I suppose. They do lay on the appreciate what you have moral pretty thick. We do get a nice cynical jab at the media, though, and how we treat the homeless as a society. Its ending is portrayed so earnest, so introspective, that it's hard not to be won over. It's such a cathartic moment. These two have been bickering for about a season and a half now. It helps humanize Bart and demonstrate that, for all the bad crap he commits, he really does have a good heart and cares about his sister. This stuff should be implied, Bart's not a sociopath, but it's cool that the Simpsons actually went there, especially this early in the series' history. Alright, so no one really expects Homer is actually going to die at the end of one fish, two fish, blowfish, bluefish, but it doesn't really matter. I think what makes this one remarkable is how seriously they regard the situation, how special they treat all of Homer's relationships. It's almost like a buffet of Homer's various character pairings in their episodes. Here's the resolution to Lisa's substitute. Here's the end of Bart the Daredevil. Here's old money. Here's Bart gets hit by a car. 
The death scare is kind of a gimmick, but each moment is portrayed with so much personal detail, so much character. Stuff like Homer making Maggie a video, teaching Bart how to shave, wrestling with his dad. I gotta say, I laugh every single time at this visual moment. I wish I could own this animation cell. Also, this episode has Bart and Lisa singing the frickin' theme song to Shaft. I can dig it. It does lose me a bit when they have to add some obstacles for him, like getting thrown in jail for the Act 2 break. I get why they gotta do this, it's just not really the draw of the episode. The real draw is how much it brings out the best in Homer, how he'll make peace with his relationships and manage to face death with some kind of dignity. Well, maybe not at first, but he gets there eventually. That's the important thing. Itchy and Scratchy and Marge provides a dynamite combination of an interesting issue discussion with some of the very best jokes of the season. The premise of the story naturally leads to hilarious moments. We get that interplay between TV gags and how they trickle into the real world. Everything with Maggie is fantastic. The psycho parody, her wielding that pencil, the scary lemonade. We obviously get some classic Itchy and Scratchy stuff here too, but the Porch Pals are really what we remember this for. God, the scene is dripping with sarcasm. It's kind of wonderful and disgusting how over the top it is. Look at those eyelashes. Itchy and Scratchy are absolutely adorable. Special shout out to this excellent pastoral sequence with the kids. I always marvel at how beautifully this sequence was storyboarded and put together. It's almost cinematic. I think it's easy to react to Marge's crusade as her just overreacting into a censorship craze. But it's awesome how much fire and vigor there is to her characterization. It's believable that she would be legitimately concerned about this, especially after a serious injury like this one. I don't necessarily think it hits on the big picture of this issue, like whether someone as impressionable as Maggie should even be watching in the first place. And the issue kind of fizzles out in Act 3. Marge just waves the white flag. Still, I love the self-deprecating way they tackle these issues. That a TV show like The Simpsons is implying that TV is kind of a bad thing on a fundamental level. But we all love it anyway. Now pass me some of that lemonade. You know, I really miss 1970s nostalgia. And I'm saying this as someone young enough to not even remember the 1980s. I think this aesthetic really makes the way we was memorable, especially the farther we get away from that decade. It's awesome seeing Marge with her long hair, her give em hell radical attitude, seeing Homer as the 1970s slacker type, just wanting to listen to music and smoke and stuff. There's a roughness, a grunginess to the setting that pairs nicely with this kind of humble story. It does a great job encapsulating the kind of difficulties Homer and Marge would run into as a couple. There's a sense sometimes that Homer isn't really good enough for her, that she should be with successful people like Artie Ziff. It doesn't quite fall into a typical snobs versus slobs kind of love story, where Homer is entirely sympathetic. They do demonstrate the immaturity and lack of thoughtfulness that Homer brings. It zigzags just enough to keep the tension up, despite being a flashback. Homer is obviously not perfect, but it's clear how much of a better person he is with Marge around, and he brings a warm, supportive kindness that Marge needs. Also, she kind of pities him. But I think it says something about Marge, that she'll give this sad sack another chance. Maybe I'm crazy, but the way we was kind of feels like the nexus point in the timeline in a weird way. That base foundational moment where Homer and Marge got locked into their density. I'm not surprised at all the show regularly goes back to the 1970s. Or their 70s themed prom. This episode is fundamental to understanding the Homer and Marge relationship. Two Cars in Every Garage and Three Eyes on Every Fish is the episode that made Mr. Burns a star. He is unbelievably good in this thing, from his safety inspection, to his actor portraying Charles Darwin, to his numerous tirades. It's a kind of weird portrayal in some ways, especially since they're really citizen caning him up right here. But I don't know. I like seeing Mr. Burns go on a drunken, depressed stroll, having an intimate discussion with his employee. I kind of want more of this sad, drunk Burns. It's pretty interesting. It's so raw. The plot structure is pretty slick with its design. 
how they sort of balance between the wackier topical political stuff with the simple back and forth between Homer and Marge. They use Blinky exceptionally well, kicking off the whole thing, then serving as an obstacle for Mr. Burns, and then playing a role in his comeuppance. Serving him that fish is an absolutely genius move for Marge. Always gives me a Machiavellian chuckle at how deftly she plays him right here. Overall, there's a symmetry to this plot that's really appealing. It builds and builds in a satisfying and natural way. It does feature the weirdest bit of animation of the season, however, kind of suspecting they left this in because it's so bad it's good. But there's nothing bad about this episode as a whole. I love me some Mr. Burns, and this episode satisfies my appetite. Okay, so I've already reviewed this in full, so I'll try not to repeat myself too much. I think what really works about Three Men in a Comic Book is how goal-oriented its plot is, how it puts itself in a good place to explore different settings. They throw us into the fun world of comic books right out the gate, getting all sorts of observational and topical material. But it gives Bart such a clear objective. This isn't just a meta-genre parody, we get a real personal goal we can get invested in. It leads to a ton of memorable interactions with people like Homer, Lisa, Mrs. Glick, and others while he scrounges for cash. Let the good times roll. It feels like a very modern episode structure-wise, bouncing around from funny premise to funny premise. We get just enough of this action by the time Bart gets the comic book and starts up the Millhouse and Martin stuff. These guys aren't really in the episode before, but its goal-oriented structure never makes these changes feel jarring. And of course, any Act 3 that devolves into paranoia, betrayal, and a brawl is always going to be a good time. Maybe not for Martin, but it's entertaining for us. The story does lead to a very traditional kind of moral, but at least they lampshade it, I suppose. Three Men in a Comic Book kind of feels like the first Season 3 episode, in a way. The point where they really stepped up their jokes and pacing, while still keeping their finger on the pulse of its story arc and character stuff. Maybe it doesn't have the most emotional or biggest moments of the season, but its consistency and humor is worthy of a top three spot. Bart Gets an F is a ridiculously good episode. It would have a solid chance to be top three in any Simpsons season. It is that good. It's just such a nuanced exploration of Bart Simpson as a character. It might be the best, most comprehensive exploration of him. This is the episode that really pushes Bart, where the stakes are legitimately high. It's not like they're laughing off an ineffective punishment, making self-aware jokes about it. Bart is the kind of character who really flourishes when backed into a corner, giving him the opportunity to show off what he can do when he actually tries. It's a brutally honest portrayal of how difficult it can be to change one's mindset, to take those first little steps. It portrays how bad Bart's habits are, how challenging this can be mentally. However, they're very clear in demonstrating how Bart's environment plays a key role, how Homer distracts him, how Martin ultimately abandons him. It's not just a bootstrap story. I think that's important. I'd argue the real final exam of this episode is when Lisa convinces Bart to go study instead of playing in the snow. He takes so many baby steps toward getting there. This really feels like the moment where he deserves to pass. Seeing him fail anyway at first is absolutely heartbreaking. This scene destroys me every single time. The whole applied knowledge thing can feel like a bit of a plot trick, but I like what it says about Mrs. Krabappel too. That she's not a bad actor here. She wants Bart to succeed and will recognize it when it happens. Everyone seems to be trying their best in Bart Gets an F, and I think that's what's so appealing about it. Just talking about it now kind of makes me want to put it at number one, but it kind of ran into a buzzsaw. You all know what it is. Ugh, this is the most chalky, predictable pick ever, but fine, whatever. Don't care if it's boring, gotta be honest with the countdown. In some respects, Lisa's substitute kind of stands on the shoulders of moaning Lisa's greatness. Except in this case, getting a little more specific on how the system in general fails her, how her relationship with her father is unsatisfying. It's kind of devastating in what a tease the whole situation is for her. 
that Lisa's never been pushed or encouraged to realize her full potential before. And that Mr. Bergstrom shows up, this sensitive and dynamic educator who inevitably has to leave. It's the knowledge of what could be that hurts sometimes, that clear recognition of lost opportunities. Dustin Hoffman absolutely crushes it with his performance, such a calm understanding in his words, so much wisdom there. What's really impressive is that the whole dynamic never comes off as creepy. He recognizes the issues Lisa has with her father and tries to reach out to him instead. It's always about Lisa's development. Of course, this episode features the very famous train scene, culminating in the very famous note. It's so beautiful in its simplicity, this message about knowing who you are and drawing strength from it. Mr. Bergstrom really is the best. Also, Bart has a subplot about student elections or something. But seriously, this B-plot works nicely as a fun little change of pace. It's breezy, provides some funny jokes, and concludes in a silly manner. I think what's really effective about it, especially compared to the season 1 version, is that it dovetails so well into Lisa's main storyline that it gives Homer something to be distracted about, bringing into focus about how he treats his two kids. This big fight at the end could feel a little awkward, like those weird fourth acts in recent episodes. Lisa's substitute kind of takes the story to the next level, examining where these issues actually come from, how she's treated like a ghost in her own household. I'll admit, I've always found the treacly music a little manipulative, but dang it if this isn't a sweet ending. Homer and Lisa are, in my opinion, the most compelling character duo on the show. I am not surprised at all that they did two of these in season three. Lisa's substitute really started something great. So that's ultimately where I landed with my top 10 list. It's weird how it shook out. The kids really dominated the top few spots for this one. I guess season 2 really captured Bart and Lisa's issues well. Just missing the top 10 list were Homer vs. Lisa and the Eighth Commandment, the original Trials of Horror, Brush with Greatness, and the classic Oh Brother Where Art Thou. Like I said at the beginning, cutting this list down to 10 episodes was extremely difficult. Having to decide between mini golf and the car built for Homer delayed this video by a full day. This is obviously just one person's take on the top 10 episodes, so I'm curious to hear where all of you would rank season 2. It's clear by my list that I have a craving for sugar when revisiting this era. Maybe Roger Meyer's cynicism was justified. Next time we're moving on to season 3, the land of chocolate, talking softball, and uh, awkward nuanced discussions. But at least there will be no winking fish. As always, thanks for watching.